Hi, it's Nick here with another edition of If I Can Do It, You Can Do It Too. So this time what we're going to try and do is show you how to winterize your trailer. Here's a little diagram that might represent exactly what your trailer would look like with water coming in from underground up to your main turn-on valve inside your trailer and then being distributed throughout the trailer, you know, to things like toilets and sinks and washing machines, etc. Our goal is to add a compressor blowing air into the lines and blowing the blue cold water as well as the red hot water out of those lines and replacing it with nice fresh green air because air does not freeze. So when you're getting ready for the season to close things up for the year, of course, you've got to plan ahead. You want to make sure that uh, all your dry goods are packed and bringing them home with you. Make sure that all the liquids that you leave inside the trailer are in the bathtub. That's the safest place for them. Because if they burst over the winter time by freezing, if they they all burst into your bathtub I guess that's not the end of the world and then importantly you got to make sure that your your beer fridge you got to get your beer fridge empty you can't leave your beer in your fridge all winter long because uh, it's just gonna burst and that'd be such a waste well there's a couple of items that you're gonna need in order to winterize your trailer properly and one of them is a inexpensive compressor you know you can buy these at Canadian Tire for like $50 you can buy one uh, small compressor. This one came from Harbor Freight, and I'm sure it didn't cost more than 25 bucks there. Anyhow, you need a little compressor that will generate at least 40 pounds of pressure, and that's all you need. Now I've got a, a rubber hose uh, with a quick connect on the end of it. You know, let me just show you the quick connect. So it's got a quick connect on the end of it. Most importantly, what you need is this. Now you can make this out of about six dollars worth of parts at any hardware store. First thing is you need a hose, a hose bib adapter. Uh, this is male to male, and you need a female piece of hose. You know, so this is just a piece of garden hose to here to here. Take a chunk off a piece and get one of these adapters. Then at the other end. You need an inexpensive valve so that you can turn the air on or off, and you need uh, something to connect into the into the uh, into the compressor hose, a quick connect piece. All of that costs. If that costs ten dollars, I'd be a monkey's uncle. You also need at least four jugs of this stuff. Now I've got five. They come in cases. You can buy it at Canadian Tire when it's on sale for about $13 for a case of four one-gallon jugs. But I need five because in our specific situation, we have a washing machine and it uses up a jug all by itself. The first step is to shut the water off at the main shutoff, which in this case is that green, lime green hose whipping around. Chrissy is moving this enormous patio stone. Chrissy's now going to attempt to reach inside that hole and shut the main water off from the park. Sounds like you got it. It's off. So after the water is shut off at the main valve and our first challenge is to empty this uh, this hot water heater, which is turned off. So uh, make sure you turn the hot water heater off at the fuse panel first. Now this is if you've got an electric one. So this is, a, this is an electric water heater inside a park model trailer. This hot water heater is electric, just like the one in your house. So the pet cock at the bottom, while it's closed right now, I'm gonna open it. This hose is, runs all the way outside the trailer and out to the driveway. I'm hooking up my my compressor to the uh, to the hose that would feed the hot water hose that would feed the uh, 
the washing machine. And I'm gonna put pressure backwards into the hot water tank by opening up the valve and turning on the compressor. Once I open this valve, I should start flowing air through the line back to the hot water tank and emptying it into the driveway. That's what we're hoping. You got water coming out, Murph? So that'll take about 10 minutes. We're getting near the end. You can hear that the water tank is pretty much empty, but it's still got a little. That's how you know that's a good sign. So here's a reflection um, park model, but it has, it has a gas water heater. And so this video is to show you how to winterize and empty your water heater before you uh, blow out the lines inside this trailer. So step one on here is shut the water off at the main spigot. And we know there's no water, right Vinny? Right. Water is off. With everything closed, you take a one and one sixteenth inch socket. And you see that little knob down there? There you go. Give that a crack open. And hot water is going to start coming out. Okay. But it'll come out in <laughs> glugs at first. I'm just clearing out of the way here so the camera doesn't get wet. And there's the rod, the sacrificial rod. Now you see it's glugging out. That's too slow. So what we're going to do is open it, let some air in the system and let that come out. Okay. Now there's air behind it. That'll drain that hot water heater post haste. Now that it's drained, we're just putting that uh, plug back in, that sacrificial rod and plug. And uh, just give it a little snug. picked an outside water spigot which is one of the low points in the house and connected our compressor to it it's shut we'll turn on the compressor let it build up some pressure then open this valve and start blowing out uh, some of the cold water lines there's all of the water lines <laughs> let that build up to about 40 pounds of pressure open this up and open up this tap. So now we're pushing air back through this tap. And the first thing I'm going to blow out is the sprinkler system. You can see the sprinkler heads are now blowing the water that's in the lines underground. That's it. They're empty. So what we want to do now is go to the furthest place from where we're connected. And that would be the kitchen, because that connection to the spigot is at the very back of the house. So we'll turn on some water here. And you can see there's some water coming out. A little hot, a little cold. I'll switch it over to the cold side. You can hear the compressor in the background. So we're blowing the longest line in the trailer. The 
some pressure build up over to the hot. There's the hot water line. Systematically walk around to every tap in the house and do the same thing, shut it off, let some pressure build up, go back to the bathroom. I may as well stop here at the washing machines and just make sure these lines here is Pressure build up again. Go off to the washroom. Top at the front of the trailer next. So we'll just come over to this water spigot. Hi, buddy. completely kitty corner to where the compressor is plugged up. It's over on the one side at the back and this is the other side of the trailer at the front and air is being blown through all the pipes in the house and being released here. And so we'll shut this one back off. Right below the water tank where the water comes into the house first you're gonna have there's the main water in there's gonna be a couple of release valves you can see them right there i'm gonna open those up and see if i can pour the water out of those lines now Pressure build up. The last thing to blow out is the line that comes right from the water spigot to the house. And we'll do exactly the same thing. Not much 
much left in there. I'm gonna put a cap on that mirror. Hang on. Now all the water is blown out of the lines, so I've capped. You can see down there, I've capped the faucet with a brass cap, another 19 cent part, and put a plug and cap on the hose that goes into the house. That way no critters crawl in those hoses through the winter time. Now the next step is to open every tap. Yeah, open all the taps in the house, hun. In the middle between hot and cold. In the middle between hot and cold. Every one. So we just open every tap now and let air, if there's any water left in those lines, it won't matter because there's, we leave all the taps open. If anything freezes, there'll be enough room for it to expand inside the pipes. So we just open all the taps. The water is shut off and the lines are blown out. Step one complete. Julie's inside opening all the taps in the kitchen and in the bathroom. We'll just let the air roam through those pipes for the winter. Now that the water is all blown out of the lines, I'm just gonna shut the gas off into the house just by uh, using this little wrench. This little set of pliers. Right now it's flowing. And that should be closed. Don't forget, you have to blow out your garden hoses as well. So the compressor is working and we'll connect up to that and blow it out. Okay, water and gas is off. Our, the water is drained and the gas is uh, off. All these taps are open. And the last thing to do is to put antifreeze in things. Now, this washing machine requires a gallon of antifreeze. And according to the instructions, you don't have to do a, a rinse cycle to use it. So I'm just going to dump one in. So if all, some washing machines require a rinse cycle. This one doesn't. This one just requires that you dump a gallon of antifreeze right in the spinner. And it pushes whatever water is in it out to that drain. That's it. That's done. Next up, both of the traps in the kitchen sink are going to get a half a gallon each. Probably overkill. We want to push the water that's in that trap out. And replace it with antifreeze. And we'll do both sides. sink is done we'll wipe it up and then move on to the bathroom but let's concentrate on the toilet here for a minute right now it's still got water in it although the water is turned off we're just going to flush it once and get whatever water is in the back here out of it you can see it's not refilling So what we're going to do is we're going to throw, I like to put at least two gallons in the toilet, one in the back and one in the bowl, and push everything out. So there's a gallon in there. And I know it's probably overkill, but we'll flush the toilet. Now I 
know, two gallons may seem excessive for the toilet, but I tell you, it's worth it. You do not want your toilet exploding in the wintertime. Finally, stick a half a gallon down the trap here. We'll stick half down in this, in the tub. A little harder to get it down there. That's all there is to winterizing the water part of the trailer. And you wipe down, wipe down all the antifreeze out of the sinks and out of the, and out of the tub because it does leave a stain. When you get back in the spring, you'll see a pink stain if you don't. So that's it. Total of five gallons for this because of the washing machine. Otherwise, one case of four would do a trailer easily. And that's two of them in here. Don't forget to clean your fire pit and remove your fire pit ring and then just cover it so nobody falls in the hole all winter next thing get distilled water we'll tell you why it has to do with golf carts but uh jug of, this jug of distilled water at the grocery store is 99 cents so let's talk about our golf carts People think it's a big deal, I guess, to put away a golf cart. It's not really. It's the only thing you got to recognize is it needs someplace nice uh, and out of the elements for the winter time. And in an electric golf cart, you got to make sure the batteries are uh, will survive the winter. So I'll show you how to do that. First thing you want to do is clean the golf cart, get it all nice and clean, wax it up, clean your wheels, uh, just get some of the crap off of it from the season. Then the next thing you want to do, if you cover ready. Clean up your batteries. Baking soda and water, scrub it around, hose it off, and you'll have a nice clean battery compartment. Now this is an old golf cart, but if you maintain them, uh, they'll last forever. And uh, take the caps off and check every one and make sure they're filled, not to the top, but to the top of that. You see this little uh, plastic thing that touches down? It's like a finger, and that finger reaches down into the cell, and the water should come up to the base of that finger, which is in this case is about an inch below the top. Every cell needs to be filled with distilled water, not tap water, distilled water. And once you've done that, go ahead and charge, charge the cart. You charge it once, you charge it all the way until the charger stops, then you unplug the charger, and you charge it again, one more time. You'll note, when you look at the gauge, when you first charge it, it'll start at 20 amps and it'll work its way down to zero. Now, when it shuts itself off, then you unplug it and then replug it back in. The needle will jump right up to 15 or 20, but it'll immediately head back towards zero. But it'll go on from about five amps all the way to zero again and overcharge the batteries. And basically getting the electrolyte inside the batteries bubbling. And once you've done that with full batteries, charged twice in a row, your cart is ready to put away for the winter. The last thing you have to do is uh, once the batteries are all charged up, and everything is cleaned, you've got the cart parked where you want it. Some people park it up on their, sh on their deck. Other people have put it in the up front at the gazebo and pay the 100 bucks to store it there. But you find your final parking spot where it's going to go. Make sure there's air in the tires, make sure that the batteries are done. And then the last thing you want to do is disconnect the main negative cable. We want to disconnect this battery. Be careful. Just use this wrench with your hand on it. You don't want it touching anything metal. And once you loosen that nut, just go ahead and uh, pull it off. Get those two cables off. Remember that there's two of them. And drop them somewhere in your cart where they won't touch the battery by accident. You can put the nut back on. And you see my hands all greasy. That's because we use something called dielectric grease. And I don't know if you can see, but it's a thin coating of this grease that goes on top of your battery posts and the battery cables you could use vaseline as well but uh, what you don't want them doing is corroding so you want to protect them 
with some uh, dielectric grease or Vaseline or something. Dielectric grease, $1.29 a Canadian tire. That tube's lasted me about six years, and it looks like I'm probably ready for a new tube. Anyhow, that and an old paintbrush, and uh, you can do up your battery terminals nice. I also might mention it's good to have a small funnel and maybe a little measuring cup, because trying to fill those little holes with uh, a great big jug of uh, distilled water, you'll spill it all over the place. So if you just put it in a cup, and you can slowly drizzle water into each one of those cells until the water just comes up to the bottom edge of that finger that sticks down. You'll see it when you pull the lid off of your battery cells. And that's it. This cart has been charged. It's been cleaned. It's uh, been double charged. And now I've disconnected that cable. So there's going to be no um, parasitic draws through the winter time. And that's it. And with the batteries being supercharged as they are, that electrolyte won't freeze. The batteries are full. They won't burst. And you're good to go. The cart is done. And so the cart's all covered up and it's in a fairly sheltered place for the winter. I mean, ideally it would be closed on all sides, but just trying to keep the snow off of it. But uh, it's not moving. Batteries are disconnected, charged, and going to be weathering the rest of the winter. And once you're done with all the water and all of the natural gas and all of the antifreeze, and you've put away your golf carts and uh, made sure your batteries are done, then the final thing is to pack up all the furniture that you're going to leave outside and cover it and uh, say goodbye for the season. And like that, we're all closed up for winter. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video on how to winterize your trailer. It's not the only way to do it, but it's the way that I've been doing it for the last seven or eight years and never had a problem. And one thing is for sure, if I can do it, you can do it too.